Ah! Oops. Hello everybody and welcome back to the coolest dog training channel right here on YouTube. I'm Tom Davis, America's canine educator. I sound a bit like a newscaster there. Sorry about that. Anyway, hello if you're new and welcome back if you've been here. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Today I have probably one of the most beneficial, important videos that I've ever put together for dog owners. And that's saying a lot, because I put almost 300 videos out there for you guys, but today it's about something that I see almost every single day. Dogs with behavioral problems with zero control. I'm gonna get right to the chase. Basically having an internal behavioral problem with the dog, meaning my dog is possessive in this case, or my dog is aggressive, or my dog doesn't like other dogs, or my dog doesn't like strangers, and so on and so forth. This is such a problem in so many different dog homes and people's homes rather, um, and the, the core of it is in this video. It's not having the stability in your relationship, not having the clarity in your obedience, creates all of these different behavioral problems. So this is one of the most important videos I put together. I'm really happy um, with it. If you guys like it, don't forget, like, subscribe to my channel. I put these out all the time. Thank you so much for joining me. What are we working on today? No. Okay and my mom took this video. We usually, no. she's provoking him just for this. Yeah, 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 sure, just to show you. We use a fence to And in this case too, especially with like medium to smaller sized dogs um, that look like teddy bears and they're cute, they tend to get away with a lot of stuff. So sometimes a lot of this type of behavior is also created off of your relationship as well. <laughs> So let's see you, um, <clears throat> let's do a little like leash work with him, just like healing him around and I wanna see how, how he responds to that. That's the other thing that I wanna work on too is just reestablishing your relationship with the dog as well because you're getting the dog that says, this is mine, you're not gonna to touch it and if you are, I'm, gonna fu I'm basically gonna punch you in your face for it. And so you have to be able to have the relationship enough to be like, wait a minute, this, this isn't happening. And right now it's probably, he's probably like, yeah, screw you type thing. If we just, take away the resource guarding and we say, okay, buddy, heal. And he's like, see ya, and he's out. He picks it's like, wait a minute, we can't even get a dog to walk nicely on a leash. The likelihood of us getting him to jock something he loves is very small because he won't listen to us to just walk or sit or something like that. So we'll do a couple different things. We will work on relationship building stuff to get you guys back in the driver's seat. Like right now he's conflicted, like he's not sure, like when he, say, like your, like your communication is like not as clear as it should be. Sit. See what I mean? Oh my gosh, you're right. Sit. <laughs> Look at this. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. So having better communication, not necessarily like teaching him new things, but just actually starting to say, hey, this is what heel is. This is what sit is. And then that way when I'm like, all right, how fluent are you with your dog? Like, what can you tell your dog to do that they understand clearly? And then that way, like you said, you're like, well, he kind of knows this or he kind of knows that. And he gets easily, like, it's different when we're at home and I'll say wait and break and he like knows the routine mm -hmm. because I think that's where I trained him. But then if I do it, say like in the backyard, it's different for him and mm -hmm. he kind of picks and chooses when he listens to me. I'll say wait and break mm -hmm. and it's like he may or may not wait. Mm -hmm. And it's like I have no way, especially if he's far away from me, to correct him in that. Yep. Yeah, and, and that's that's kind of like what... Or that, like down, he'll hesitate. Like, yeah. So two things with that is like, one thing is, is uh, transitioning to that type of environment. So like training in here versus outside is complete, two different arenas, 
100%. It's the difference between practice and the big game. That's the difference between people in the practice versus the Super Bowl. Like, it's com okay. you can't even, like, you know, they're comparable, but not really. Be like, there's a bird, then he's like, right. Like so it's, so two things with that is, is like, transitioning into new environments takes time, consistency, and patience. Um, and then the other thing is, is just, if, if you can only get your, this happens all the time with dog owners, is if you can only get your dog to do certain things, under the right circumstances, then your dog actually doesn't know anything. Like if you were to say, my dog, only, my dog knows sit, stay, wait, heal really nicely. Great, let's see it. And then you're like, well, here maybe, it's like, well, wait a minute, right. wait a minute. Right. I asked, you know. Right. So that's kind of like where it bleeds into. And that's what he showed too when he did wait and break. It's like he wasn't. Well, he, it, it almost just looked like, you know, same thing with break. He's like, break, he's like, I'm not really sure what that is, but I'm just gonna go that way anyway. Right. So, but that's what I mean is, I would say 90, high 90s of people, um, that's, that happens, that's, that's like a thing. And then they get frustrated when they're outside and they say, what the heck is going on? You know this stuff. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, so that's why I, I always like to see, like if you're having problems with your dog completely saying, screw you, I'm not doing anything for you, but yet you, you guys are having a, 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 a trouble communicating on a very low level, like basic stuff, it would make a lot of sense for that to be happening. And that's why like when I look at my, I can look at my dog a certain way and they're like, what did I do? You know, same thing with like parenting, right? Your mom or dad looks at you, you're like, okay, sorry, <laughs> right? It's the same exact thing. And so anyway, so my point is, is I want you to take a step back and, and really be a little bit more masterful about your very basic stuff. Because the micro of the basic commands that we're going to teach is great. We know sit down, heal, stay, whatever, really well. But the macro or the bigger picture is the fact that you are in charge through all of it. Like it's cool that we're learning these things, but it, the, the bigger picture is like you are actually in charge the whole time. Not it, just at this moment. Right, okay. Okay. does that make sense? Yes. So yes. your relationship becomes stronger because you're practicing like I'm in charge. And that's why the foundation and the basic of like, you cannot, if I say sit, you can't get up until I say otherwise. And a lot of people overlook that. They go, look, sit. Good, and they talk and the dog gets up and walks away. And I'm like, well, <laughs> you know, sit, sit. What is sit if the dog only does it for four and a half seconds? So it's the break. Okay, yeah, say, see you, I'm out of here. That's like that gatekeeping relationship that you want. So that way when you're like, what do you think you're doing? They're like, ah. Because right now it's, I'm gonna walk all over you. Mm -hmm all the time, and when I want something, why would I listen to you now? I can't, like, I'm not gonna listen to you in this environment, why would I ever listen to you if I have something I completely am in love with? Yes, what good is sit only for you only at home with nothing going on? Right. Or sit only outside where nothing's going on only with you? It's like, well then, what's the point of that? And it's usually for a treat. Right, yeah. and, and again, and if we're taught with we go sit, then it, it doesn't matter because he doesn't know Sit. He knows. The hand motion, the body language. Yeah. Hey, there's something. Hey, in, there's something in my mm -hmm. hand. Yeah, and I always tell people like anybody with legs can pull hot dogs around in a room and get an animal to follow them. That's pretty simple. But what you really want to do is, hey, dog, do this behavior, and they go, got it. I understand that. Versus a routine and a sequence of sit down, stay. Like you want to just be. I mean, it's nice for like a deaf dog or something, but if you have to completely like dedicate your whole training routine to something other than you, then that's a, that's a potential problem. Because then you're like, oh, don't have my treats. I guess we're not doing any obedience right, today. Right. It's like, what's the point, really? So like I'll show you an example of that. Platz. Platz. Good Platz. Asi. Fui. Couché. Good. Asi. Down, good girl. Seat, good touch, good. So she did those behaviors up and down with three different languages, German, French, and English. So my point is, is you want that clarity. Good girl, go touch, good girl, stay. So it's being able to go, do this, do this, do this, do this, compartmentalizing everything so your dog has no idea like, it's like, do it right the first time. That way, yeah, it just makes so much more sense. And that's some of the problems you'll deal with when you're using such a high reward for a dog. As you can see, she, she did all that for food. 
and she'll do it again for food, but she'll also not do it for food. Right. You know, it's, it, like I said, it's one of those things yeah. that every single time it happens, people are like, hey, we got this big internal behavioral problem. What does your dog know? Oh, they know the basics really great. Sit down, stay heel. I'm like, all right, do it. And it's like, they don't really know it. Right. So that, it's, that, like a delu it's like a delusion at home. You're like, when but, you say sit, she's like, mm -hmm. and then he'll get paw. And he'll yeah. Like, you know, he knows but I, food's coming. Yeah, and that creates a lot of frustration because he's only one dimensional in his learning patterns. So he, at home, you have a routine, cookie jars here, uh, whatever's here, and every night you go sit, yes, good, and then you go away. And so he only knows that, that pattern through that routine. And if you can't go out and say, hey, you know, just like I did with her, it becomes a problem. And then you go like, hey, we're having some really hard times with like resource guarding. It's like, but you also can't even get your dog to sit with. So then he doesn't like.